lecture of quantum mechanics. Today we'll uh, solve some problems based on commutation, commutator bracket, and uh, operators. Okay, mostly it will be around the based on the properties of the commutator uh, bracket, which we have we had discussed in the previous lecture. Okay, you may have have a look. Okay, to have, like, get a feel of all the properties before diving into the problems. Okay, so in this problem we have the computation relation between these two quantities. Now the first step would be to use the linearity property. Okay, so the linearity property says that uh, you can like this. This will form a commutator bracket with this, and this will be form a commutator bracket with this. Okay, so the first step is to separate the terms and form the new commutator brackets. Okay, now this this will reduce to uh, we have one property which I will list down here. Uh, we can write this as 2x, okay, um, and this will be 2 minus 1 in the power, and this will be p x cap plus. Now we know that uh, the uh, commuter of a operator with it with uh, its uh, function is always zero, okay. So this becomes uh, this is 2x, okay, and this is. Uh, we can write that minus this anti-symmetry property of commutator okay so we are using that so this will become minus i h cut okay this is minus 2 i h cut x cap now since the uh, constant and this is a constant quantity i h cut it will commute with x so we can write like this okay now i'll list down the properties which we used first one was the linearity property linearity property which is uh, a b plus c uh, gives you a b plus a c okay now in the next what we use was this one this from this to this where we have used this property that if uh, f is a function of an operator a then a commuter with uh, commutes with its function okay so this is a property we have used here this one all right now in this step in this from this to this uh, we had let's say let's label this step this is say a okay so this get this is from the a okay and let's label this as b so this the property used in the this step is that if a and b commute with their commutators if a and b commute this is zero and B also commutes with the commutator between A and B. This is zero. Then, if this is true, then we say that if this is n, this will give us n B n minus one A commutator B. Now this is always true. We know that this this quantity this relation if is always true for x cap and commutator between x and p all right this relationship so this will always hold so we can directly write down this step okay next is the anti-symmetry this step this step like this step is anti-symmetry okay so c is the anti-symmetry property of the commutator bracket these are all listed out in the previous lecture you can have a look okay i'll just i'm just briefly writing it down so anti-symmetry says that this is minus of B A. Okay, all right. So try it once. So uh, the answer is uh, correct. Answer is D. So this question: If commutator of x and p is i h cut, i h cross, the value of h q commutator of x q and p is. So in this thing, you can just write down that x q p. Okay. This is written as 3x now 3 minus 1 now the commutator xp. Now this gives you 3x square. Now this gives you i h cut and you can write 3 i h cut x square. Alright. So uh, the correct answer is uh, C. Now we have used the property that if A and B 
commutes with their commutator that is a commu commutes with the commutator which is which is which means that the commutator between a and a com a commutator a b gives you zero and similarly b gives you this with commute like commutes with the commutator so then we can write that a n b is equal to n a n minus 1 a b all right we can write like this and uh, this will give uh, th this this relationship holds for x and x p okay so you can directly apply this formula okay to get this result so the correct answer is c now this question says that the operator is equivalent to or to you like simplify an operator okay to simplify an operator uh, you always need to have an, a function to operate on a wave function so this is the question which came up came in just okay um, i think in the year 2013 maybe so these are the options given to you so what you need to do is see since uh, the the order of operators matter so what you do is you just take a dummy for wave function and operate this thing okay you know you cannot just multiply it okay because sometimes the operator is like sometimes we miss uh, we can miss some step okay without the uh, wave function so it's better to use a dummy wave function okay in this case we just operate this so this is uh, the linearity property of this operator so we'll get this thing and then now operate this term on this too and then this on this too so if you operate this so you'll get this is double derivative of psi okay plus d dx x psi minus x d psi by dx minus x square psi okay so this is d square the de double derivative of um, psi with respect to x plus now this is we just uh, differentiate it okay um, so this will be psi plus x d psi by dx minus x d psi by dx okay so this is x square psi so this will give you if you rearrange the term see the this 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 term and this term is same the order is same x d dx x d dx okay so just yes this you can cancel them out and you are left with x square plus psi so you just take out psi like separate the operator and the psi okay you get this so basically we can to summarize this this operator is equivalent to is equivalent to d dx square minus x square plus one okay so it's always better to use a dummy wave function okay and see the operate the wave uh, operator accordingly and we'll get to the result okay so this matches with this one b option so b option is correct now uh, this is a question which was asked in uh, just okay so for operators p and q the commutator p and q inverse is now we, i think we should check each of the options okay uh, let's check option a option a says that q inverse p q q inverse so if you check this option this is this will p q minus q p q inverse so this gives you this q inverse p q q inverse minus this is q inverse q q q inverse so we know that this will give you identity okay so this is q inverse p minus this will give you identity this is p q inverse so if you write down this thing we have used the you we have used uh, this thing that uh, q inverse q is equal to uh, identity or q q inverse okay 
we have used this thing here. So this will reduce to Q inverse P. Okay, so this is not equal, right? What is not equal to this one because this is uh, inverted. Like it will, if you write like if you try to like the uh, write like the given one, it will give you a minus sign, extra negative sign. Okay, so this is not equal, right? Now next, let's check option. Similarly, let's check option B. So this is minus Q inverse P Q Q inverse. Now we have already solved this one, right? This this is same as with just the side negative sign is extra. So we can write like we can directly use this result from option A. We, we have solved this work, so we know that this this uh, quantity will result in uh, the same thing. Okay, so this will give you uh, Q inverse P. Now using the anti-symmetry property, that is this will give you minus P Q inverse. Okay, so this gives you. This will be minus minus zero root p. Okay, so uh, you can see that this matches with the uh, this matches with the given. With the given uh, commutator, okay, in the question. Right, I think this should be uh, there shouldn't be any inverse sign here. Okay, then only it will make sense. Otherwise, all of these are two options were same. Right, so this is the result. Now this question is a very interesting one. Uh, it was asked in just 2018. Uh, if psi x is an infinitely differentiable function, then uh, the d operator acting on x, uh, where d operator is defined as this, can be written as which of the following? Okay, so uh, the thing is that uh, it's better to assume uh, from, from the form of the function that say let's uh, psi x be a x, let, let it be x, right? So if you see, we can take a general uh, power also, but uh, let's start with simple uh, functions. So uh, this can be differentiated infinitely, okay? So you can keep on differentiating it even after you get zero, you can keep on differentiating it. So uh, it's infinitely differentiable, all right? So if you operate this kind of thing on x, okay, so this gives you, this is exponential exp x d, dx dx. Now this exponential, this can be written as, now uh, I had not discussed this in the properties that uh, 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 e a can be written as identity plus a plus a square by 12, sorry, 2 factorial by a cube by 3 factorial and so on okay so this is the effect of this so we can write like this i nine d okay uh, this is simply one okay uh, in this case so this is this will be x dx plus x d dx square one by two factorial okay this will be x now, if you operate on this, this x plus x, if you differentiate this with the operating on this, you'll get 1. Okay, so you can write like this x, is, this is 1, plus now this one, will, there are two operators. So this is x dx. Okay, now one, if you operate 1, x dx. Okay, let's leave the other uh, terms. This is x plus x plus. This gives you 1 by 2 factorial. Oh, sorry, I declared this x dx. This gives you uh, this is one again. You have x here and x plus x. This is one by two factorial, and this is uh, again one to this x. Okay, so this goes on, and uh, you can write like now this is there is an a here out here. I forgot and just missed this thing, so this will give you a square out here. Okay, let me write it down. This is a here, a, a square. Okay, again a here, and this is a square. Okay, so you can uh, take the x common. So this will give you this is one plus um, a plus a square by two factorial, and so on. Now this can be written as simply e to the power a, which is 
we can write like this also okay or we can have we could have written like this also so there is a come like two options could be true uh, if you use this example so we need to see which one is true so let's take a non trivial uh, exam like function to separate distinguish between which one is correct uh, for this thing so let's take psi x to be x square okay let psi x to be x square now again we do the same thing so this is we are operating on x square right now so this will give us this is exponential this is a x d dx this is x square okay so this is i plus a x dx plus a square 2 factorial x d dx whole square x square now this is x square plus a x dx with x square plus a square by 2 factorial this is now we just separate out this operator this x d dx x square plus so on so this is you'll get x square plus now in this case this is 2x so 2x okay uh, plus this x a square 2 factorial this is x dx this is 2x so this is 2x square all right so this is x square plus 2ax square plus uh, this will if you operate this a square by 2 factorial now this will give you say this is 2 so let's write the 2 here and then we uh, differentiate this thing uh, what we get is x now we have 2x plus okay so if you see that we get x square in all the terms so let's uh, separate out the x square um, all right so if you separate the x squares so what we'll get is uh, this will give you uh, 1 plus 2a plus this is 2a whole square by 2 factorial and so on okay so what we can see is this is x square and this is e to power 2a or we can write it that e a whole square which is equivalent to writing that this is this becomes the function now since the wave function we had assumed the function we had assumed were not the wave function we had assumed this function to be x square okay it just talks about the uh, function so this is uh, now it's clear that this is represented by this c option c option is correct okay thank you for watching have a great day this question was asked in EIFR okay so this says that consider a quantum mechanical system with three linear operators a b and c which are related by this a b minus c equal to i now i is the unit operator and a is given b is given c must be found out so the thing is just operate this equation on a dummy wave function okay so we'll operate the given this equation on a dummy wave function always whenever you have been given to simplify an operator you always operate on a dummy wave function and see what is the result now replace a by the form given and b by the form given this c now this is psi now unit op unit operator operating on the wave function gives you a wave function all right uh, if you operate it further you get minus c this is now if you operate this thing so this is psi plus x d psi by dx minus c psi is equal to psi now if you cancel both sides so you'll get x d psi dx is equal to and rearrange you'll get this so remove the dummy wave function though c operator is equivalent to uh, this is equal to or I'll just say equal to 
uh, x d by dx which is the d option okay thank you for watching have a great day you, if you find these uh, lectures useful then please uh, like like subscribe and uh, share with your friends